All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're sick of you being the only ones virtual in this podcast. So in today's episode, we are also virtual in the podcast known as... Trapped Under Plastic with your hosts, The Tickler and Jolly John. John, how you doing? I'm doing, uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, you know. I'm crushed by a, an existential dread that's slowly creeping in around me, and it just gets darker and darker. But, you know, we won't talk about that today. Why are we virtual right now, John? <laughs> Why are we virtual? Well, I, I feel like I got my own microphone here, but this one I have to stay further away, and I want to eat it because I'm so used to recording <laughs> to eat the microphone. Um, we're virtual because COVID has hit my house, and that means for one episode, um, our episodes are going to be this episode is going to be virtual. So my daughter has COVID. She got it from school. She has very, very mild symptoms that are just now kind of clearing up in the last day or two. Oddly enough, my wife and I don't have it. And we, uh, at least when we got checked uh, uh, five days ago, we didn't have it. So okay, I don't know. So we're both feeling, we're, we're, we're doing fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine, Scott. Everything's fine. <laughs> That's good. Sounds like kind of a best possible outcome for someone getting COVID. No one else gets infected, and it's a pretty mild case anyways. All right. right. Yeah, so we think that she had it for about a week prior to being tested. It's very uh, minor cold system symptoms. And I honestly, I was kind of bummed that my wife and I tested negative because we had no <laughs> symptoms. Well, no, we had no symptoms. We were feeling fine. We figured we would have had uh, it enough to where our symptoms would be showing. Okay. And we just didn't have it. And so I was like, damn it. I wanted them antibodies, but whatever, okay. whatever. I We're you. good. We're good. So last week, John wanted to get some pump up songs for the podcast. And man, there were a lot of recommendations. I would say 80% of the comments, are probably all song recommendations. <laughs> yeah. And there were even more on Patreon, like on like the extended episode post that we had. Yeah. And uh, uh, a viewer I believe the guy who actually is making the trapped under plastic sign for our eventual new set made a Spotify playlist of a large portion of all those recommendations. And you kind of pared it down to like 10 here that you really like. Yeah. So uh, as of the recording of this episode, there's 141 songs on that <laughs> list. And there was even like people that started threads on the Facebook group too. So he grabbed them from there as well. Um, oh and I have to say, because last night I went through every single one. So if you submitted a song, it's on that list. I either know it already and I gave it a nod or I listened to it. Um, some of them I obviously heard before, but I wanted to listen to them through the realm of, is this a pump up song, right? Um, and I came down with, I kind of like wrote down notes of songs that stood out to me. I want to say there was such a wide variety of musical stylings and genres here okay we had everything from like classic 50s and 60s r&b from detroit like really good motown stuff um up to obviously some some harsh metal stuff <laughs> and like everything in between so all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna just rattle through these okay the boys are back in town by thin lizzie Mm. That's just so good. It's so happy. Uh, Sweet mm. Caroline by Neil Diamond. That's awesome. Nobody But Me by Human Beings. Do you know that song? No. Well, I, I okay. might, but I don't know the, the title. Okay, so here's the part of the song that you'll know. No, 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 no. Nobody can do this like I do. Nobody. Yeah, so it's just like, it's like a feel good do this in the shower. So that's a great one. All right. And then... I, I, I'm just going to be honest here because I had not listened to this band before and I got on a kick last night and listened to just about every song that they have made. The name of the band is Glory Hammer. I'm sure you've heard of them. I hadn't heard of them. I freaking love them. I love everything about these guys. They're like telling D&D &D stories and Lord of the Rings stories through metal music. Very Blind Guardian inspired to me. Okay. The name of the song is Unicorn Invasion of Dundee. I just got to say, if there were any song that you would get hyped about, it's definitely called The Unicorn Invasion of Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's so good. 
That's so good. So if you haven't heard of Glory Hammer before, I'm sure a lot of people that listen to this podcast are like, duh, of course. Um, So I learned something good. Uh, Little Stevie Wonder Superstition. Ooh, that was a great one. We Built This City by Starship. That that might be this song's, like, kind of the flagship song of this podcast. Because we built built Curse City, you know? Uh, Yes. (laughs) Um, Golden by Corey Wong and Cody Fry. Are these, are these, uh, is this Tiny Meat Gang? No, Corey Wong is the rhythm guitarist that often plays with Wolfpack. Um, oh. and Gold, Golden is one of his own spinoff songs. It's, it's a, it's a great song. I had not heard of it before. It's kind of a, nice. it feels almost slightly comedic spoof song, but okay, not, okay. not, not full, full bore into that. The Edge of Seventeen by or Edge of Seventeen by Stevie Nicks is a, it's just an all out banger. And then our good buddy Stu had to recommend Whip It by Devo. <laughs> okay. Um, Handlebars by Flowbot. That, that, that's a that was a banger. And then one of the all time greatest songs <laughs> by the great Biggie Smalls himself, Big Papa. And that's I used to listen to that song. It's kind of like my. Uh, like my mellow slow jam, get my pre-drink on in college before you go to the parties. You listen to a little biggie. So uh, yeah, that that's it. That's the I list. Have an emotional connection to one of these songs, and that okay. is the, bo- the boys are back in town. Yeah, there was a a movie called Knight's Tale. Have you ever seen Knight's Tale? Uh, of course. Hello, yeah. it's called a Lance. <laughs> <laughs> so they feature the boys are back in town. We will rock you by Queen, and also Lowrider, yeah. uh, like during various montage moments in the movie, and every single song is just so like well placed in that movie, and so that one really, that one gets me. That's I think Knight's Tale is like '90s cheesy romantic comedies. It's like okay, we got the formula down for this kind of movie. Let's make a slightly dude version of that movie. <laughs> and that's a night's tale. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's so good. Like it uses that, you know, um, 10 things I hate about you kind of like style of video. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's, I love that movie. It's so good. Yeah, it's so feel good. Great. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, boys are back town. Yeah. Boys are back town. Great one. Great one. Did, um, anyway, I was just so shocked. There was, everything was all over the map. So we have an eclectic, deep musical taste for all the goody peepees. Yeah, our, our fan base does. We we do not. Maybe not. Maybe not yeah. us, but they do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did you did you click on the Spotify link? Okay. Look at the picture. F- the okay, picture okay. for the playlist. This is weird to be doing the podcast in front of a computer. What the fuck am I looking at right here? Dude, who it's did, li- who made that? I don't know. I don't know who made that, but that kind of looks like us. <laughs> Absolutely does. I mean, it has our style of glasses. It has like the you have. Your, I know with the black you, on top. I have my clear frames. So this is somebody took a okay for the audio listeners. Someone took the Looney Tunes logo where they're like going in the Warner Brothers circles, and they made Scott and I as Looney Tunes characters, and it says Tendy Tunes. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. I don't know who made that. If Jonathan, if you made that, like whoever did that. It kind of looks like us. So yeah. I just saw it last night. I'm like, holy shit. I didn't, I didn't oh, dude, know Barracuda's on this list, dude? Yeah, dude. I fucking love Barracuda. It, you can, I, I mean, I'm like, I seriously am going to use this playlist for like workout stuff because it's like, some of it's like <laughs> actual, it's like actual pump up music, which was, was exactly what I was going for, like pure pump up. But I know sometimes my communication skills aren't what they need to be. But what I was going for is feel good, you know, feel good pump up. And some okay. are awesome. Barracuda, great example. Feel good. Oh, Enter Sandman by Metallica. Oh, okay. Had, we can't. Right. You know, you can get sucked into this. You know. Yeah, you can easily. Mm-hmm. All right. Was that? Does that count as your preamble ramble? I think so. I think so. What's, what's your What's your rambles of the preamble nature? <laughs> so I went to Miami recently for a little five day or four day vacation, and the only time I read is when I'm on vacation because I'm just, you know, I'm often just sitting being lazy and reading. Um, and I finally finished the Von Carson trilogy. And I know you're going to love this, John, because this is fucking Warhammer lore. But I am now a vampire expert. So leave your questions Whoa. about Von Carson Whoa. vampires 
in the comment section below, then I will answer them because I'm basically a PhD student right here. Wow. When's your thesis wow. coming out? Mm, next year. <laughs> Always next year. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the free beer tomorrow sign, right? I have no idea what that is. Oh, yeah, people, when they do their own home bars, they buy these cheesy signs to put up. And uh, one, of, one of them says free beer tomorrow on a sign. Because okay. okay. every time you read the sign, the free beer is tomorrow, not today. Right. Right. So thesis is always next year. <laughs> it's okay. What do we paint? What? Um, I'm paint. first on the list here, so I want to go first. Oh, go. You go because you got to have more than me, I'm sure. Uh, maybe I painted a portion of a black tide chosen. Uh, most of it, I have just the medals left. I painted it during a live stream last Friday. Um, it's one of the characters from my gray joint army for the song of ice and fire. Um, I'm going to finish up on today's stream. And then otherwise I painted a large portion of a model that is a secret that you can't know about secret, and... secret, secrets. <laughs> I thought you were going to do the office quote. I, I don't, I don't know which one you're talking about. Dude, secret secrets are no fun. Secret secrets hurt someone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> From the stripper, dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That is a classic quote. I can't remember that one slipped my brain. Okay, yeah. secrets. Okay. If you want to was... know about the secret, uh, you can subscribe to my email list for my Kickstarter. So obviously it's a Kickstarter. It's a, it's, a, it's one of the what elves that I am painting for uh, a digital course. It's going to be one of the offerings in the Kickstarter. And John's doing one as well. His model's already done being painted, and he's writing the course right now. But if you want to learn more about all that process, and some whip photos of the of the paint job, maybe some behind the scenes of me and John filming the class, you should subscribe to the mailing list, which is linked down in the show notes or the description. Nice, nice little plug there. I like mm -hmm. that. I like that. You should. We don't have a sponsor today. You should come up with your own sponsorship message. It's just like and pay explaining yourself. the value of subscribing to my <laughs> mailing list. <laughs> like, that's that's all I want. <laughs> all right, Scott. Uh, we're going to charge you $200 for a sponsorship so you can pay yourself <laughs> next yeah. week right. for your own ad. Um, yes. Yeah, I speak, and, and that's what we're talking about, existential dread. I assume that's where you're coming from with all the stuff, not only with getting your own painting done and getting the script written and filming all that, but everything to come along yeah. with this big project coming coming to head fast, right? Yeah. It just feels like I have like a large amount of responsibility that I need to make sure I have all my ducks in a row and so so that I'm doing this the right way. I'm not like I'm not screwing myself out of money. I'm not screwing people out of like uh things that they're paying for. I'm like considering everything. It's like I just, I just want to do this the right way. I don't want to mess up. Um that's kind of what's making me freak out the most. Well, and I think that there's no way it can be 100% clean on your first run. I think if you have good intentions and you're putting in putting in the, the time, you have to say there are certain things that the 80%, you know, I'm really, you know, that I'm really confident in, that other 20% is kind of just say, leave it up to, leave it up to the gods to decide. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, what'd you paint? What did I paint? Okay, well, um, I painted this... Uh, Lich King Arthas model nice. from the World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King Pandemic game that I did for a video. And I kind of painted that up with a weird little airbrush concoction tool thing. Okay. Um, and other than that, that's the only thing I've really painted. But I want to talk a little bit about some things that I bought because I have it all in front of me here. So I had to go up to a store in the Twin Cities last weekend, last second, <laughs> to buy this thing. I bought this fucking thing. <laughs> what? Okay. I mean, like, I get it. It has a reason. It is the... It just looks so ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. So I, as of the recording of this, this video dropped this morning on this... Uh, the world's worst miniature painting products. <laughs> and what what are we looking at right now? We're looking this? at the Citadel Color Spray Stick. So it's a plastic concoction that kind of looks like a hand crossbow. Um, <laughs> that you it uses rubber bands to put the miniatures on 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 here, so you can prime them. And it doesn't even work unless they have beveled bases. So. Also, the rubber bands go around the base. It kind of hugs the sides of the base. So when you're priming it, 
you don't prime like half the base. So if you're using a rattle can, which is gonna have a little bit more texture to it, a little bit more thickness to it, you're gonna create texture around the base rim by oh. using this thing. See, I it's, thought the handles, the miniature painting handles from Citadel went in the rubber bands, but it's the bases? Yeah, the bases. Okay. So just like the handles work where like it grips the sides of the beveled base, yeah. this is just rubber bands. <laughs> it seems like a DIY product that someone was like, yeah, we'll go to market with this. It's, it's $24 for this fucking thing. $24. <laughs> okay. The intentions are good. The idea of wanting to be able to you know, have something to hold multiple miles while priming, all good ideas, but surely there's a better execution of this, right? So there's got to be. I mean, I rip on it pretty hard in the video that a, uh, like a, a free a free stir, painting stir stick from your local hardware department with some blue tack or sticky tape on it. Once, first of all, it's the same dimensions as this. A stir stick is the same length as this thing. <laughs> and it's free. And it's just yeah. like, and you're like, well, if you need the handle, why don't you just like glue a second stick to the first <laughs> stick and then hold it out here and do it. Like it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. So I had a, uh, good, a good buddy, Dan, fan of the show, friend of the show, uh, who's a manager over at The Source. I, I asked him if they carried it, and he's like, we're all sold out. I'm like, Dan, you got to be effing kidding me. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck, dude? So he's like, let me check my contacts. And <laughs> I, I, I checked local groups, um, and I found some people that had it, but I couldn't arrange in time for where I needed to shoot to pick it up from them. So I just went up to Tower Games in Minneapolis and picked it up. Now, when I was there, Joshy went with me. Sexy teeth, Joshy. He doesn't like that, by the way. He doesn't like that I talk about his teeth. He says people aren't supposed to know. So just so everybody knows, if you go to Adepticon and you see Josh, don't stare at his teeth. Whatever don't you do. Don't mention his teeth. Don't mention his teeth. Please don't say, hey, sexy Joshy with the fake teeth. Don't introduce yourself to him in that way. Please. Sexy teeth, Joshy. Sexy teeth, Joshy. You know, just whatever you do. Don't say exactly that to his face when you when you see him. Okay, um, he went with me, and they had a bunch of different products there that I had been on my list of like, ooh, that looks cool. But you know, when you're physically at a place and they have a thing, you just kind of break down. So yeah. <laughs> they had a bunch of green green stuff world. I bought the green stuff world spider serum, nice to make spider webs. I bought the green stuff world uh, UV resin. Okay. And the flashlight. The flashlight was like $12 for a UV flashlight. And I know that you could get like a UV flashlight on Amazon for like two bucks, but whatever. Uh, I bought the round cutters from Green Stuff World. So these are circles. Oh. So as you use the rollers and you can roll out a big sheet of like your texture or the patterns for bases, these yeah. are in sp specific base sizes. And then when it's like semi cured, you can punch them out like cookie cutters. Cookie cutter, okay, okay. Yeah, so they're basically cookie cutters for like $12. <laughs> um, and then I broke down and finally got some snow stuff. I got the AK Interactive snow stuff and then yeah. the mic micro balloons. So. Okay, nice, nice. So that's not painting, but that's, that's even better. That's buying. Yeah, that's buying, yeah. So... That's that's it. I mean, I painted that one model for the last video. The video today isn't painting. It's shitting on products. Um, <laughs> it's something that I, we are very comfortable doing and very familiar with. <laughs> I was kind of surprised when I thought about this that nobody has done this video before of just pooping on stuff. Yeah. Maybe, maybe people are just nicer than me, and I just have to be the, the bad guy. I will say you you do have an affinity for... You like to look for gadgets and in, in, in awesome finds, and you know you, you yeah. like to get into the deep corners of the internet to find the things that no one is using to try to revolutionize the process. That is kind right. of a shtick you have, so I, I appreciate that you're doing the hard work for us. <laughs> yeah, here's things not to waste money on because I wasted money on them. <laughs> I spent twenty four dollars on that fucking stick, knowing. <laughs> That, that it's a piece of garbage. Can you return it? <laughs> Do you just buy it for the video as like a rental fee and then you return it? I probably should. I probably should. But, you know, I'll. Daryl uses it in the video as a crossbow. Oh, I actually had Daryl funk, like, 
you make a, a long thing of rubber bands and use it as a crossbow and flick miniatures across the room with it. So at this point, I feel like I've got to keep it for that purpose. It's worth its yeah. money there. Yeah, yeah. That's like so. Daryl's new hunting weapon. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I've also been uh, I've been three D printing like a madman with this oh. new eight K printer. Oh my goodness, so many awesome, sexy, crispy sculpts. So uh, I'm gonna have some more cool stuff coming up with that too. Okay, is this for, for videos or just for joy? Ah, uh, for videos okay. and for joy. And it's like I don't have to go out and buy minis to feel that yeah, that you know that uh, those good endorphins from getting a new mini. I just make my own. I'm like, oh, I got a new mini. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> what uh, from all different types of stores or from a certain like line of miniatures? Um, yeah, I've been doing more investigating in the different Patreon companies to try like I'm trying to curate. And this is maybe something I do a video on, on at some point of like the highest quality um, 3D printable companies out there. Like who's yeah. got the who's got the best quality sculpts and stuff. Cause yeah. that's what I'm or looking like your for. Your favorite ones. Yeah. My favorite ones. Like yeah. Lord Lord of the Print is my new my new jam. He makes the most amazing dragons and stuff. So okay. not a sponsor. Before we get on to the main topic today, let's take a brief moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Mini Wargaming's very own Chaos Dave. Dave is running a new crowdfunding campaign featuring some highly detailed sci-fi miniatures for you to use in your miniature war games called Veil Touched. The minis are 32 millimeter in scale, come pre-assembled, and are made from high quality PVC plastic. The concepts are inspired by Mortal Kombat, Warhammer 40k, Vikings, and Willow. Willow? I love Willow. My favorite lines are, Willow, you idiot, and data, data. There's nothing cuter than toddler Nilwins. If you're watching or listening to this podcast on the day it launches, the campaign hasn't actually been published yet. It's coming out tomorrow on the 25th of January and only running for eight days. If you follow the campaign prior to its publishing, you get a free copy of Lord Tyrick. The Veil Touched War Pack, one of the campaign's pledge levels, contains 55 miniatures. In addition to the beautifully detailed Lord Davicus, nice, you're getting 12 executioners and 12 marauders slaying their sworn enemies. And it wouldn't be complete without the 12 Valkyries rubbing through their shields and armor. To support this furious onslaught, we've got 12 enforcers laying down some covering fire as the six elite reborn make short work of any foes foolish enough to advance toward them. For 119 bucks, this is a great amount of miniatures. You can find links to the campaign in the show notes and description below. Go support Dave, one of the OG YouTubers in the miniature wargaming world, and also get some awesome miniatures at the same time. Thanks for sponsoring this podcast, Dave. Now, back to the episode. Speaking of that, let's transition into our topic that is not related to it. <laughs> uh, we're talking today about Kickstarters, uh, but the ones that we have personally backed in the past and like why we've backed them. And I think you have a list. I have a list. And we'll kind of just go back and forth, kind of giving one item at a time and kind of discussing why we backed it in the first place. Some of these things I backed like five or six years ago, so it's been a long time. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see what you got and why you thought it was worth it. You've backed more than me. Gosh. Yeah, I'm a bit you... of a Kickstarter junkie. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I think I think your list is is manageable. I mean, it's not 50 things. So, oh, right. we, yeah, it could be worse for sure. It, it could be worse, but I'm kind of ex curious. And some of these actually, I'm just looking at your list um, is things I kind of like regretted that I didn't. <laughs> so, all right. So we're just going to hop back and forth yes. and uh, we got nice little links here. So we'll put all the links down in the description so you can kind of see what the products were and, and why we liked them. So Scott, you got a slightly longer list. So I'm going to let you go first. Okay. So mine is in order of most recent to uh, furthest in the past. So the most recent one I backed was this. It was just two characters. It was Cheyenne and Yelenia Bloodthorn, two uh, half-elf characters. Oh, sorry. One's a half-elf mage, mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is a dark elf. And mm -hmm. I don't care about the mage at all, but the dark elf has such a really – such a cool pose and cool weapons and just a cool set of armor. It's, it's a tasteful sculpt. I like, I think I like female sculpts. I think I paint a lot of them and I didn't notice that until my mom actually mentioned it recently. Cause I was like showing her my wood elf 
sculpt that I was working on mm-hmm. or I had finished. And she was like, you like female characters? And I was like, I guess I do. Cause I've painted a lot of display models that are female. But anyways, the dark elf is the one I want. looks fucking awesome. Uh, you can get it as an STL or you can get it as a resin cast. I got the resin cast version. I don't know when it's coming, but I, I haven't gotten it yet, but I like the, I like the model. Oh, so you, you, oh man, is it too late for you to like get the resin or get the STL file too? I'm curious if I'll give you a couple dollar you get me that. I, I agree that this is a really powerful pose, I guess, is the way yeah. I describe it. Yes. Very like mid stride, like she's coming to lop off some heads and she's very confident in her yes. chances of doing so. <laughs> yes. Oh, you can. I think I just found their store. I believe you can just oh, I'll probably get buy my, it right now. My my mini factory or something, sure. Yeah, something like that. Awesome. Yeah, I I think this is great. This is one of those little finds that I would probably wouldn't have come across myself, you know. And just through my Kickstarter searching, it's one of those niche things. But it's mm-hmm. beautiful, man. They made ten grand Canadian for this. Good jobs. Yeah. Good jobs. Slow. A little campaign, just two new designs. Never heard of Capredor Miniatures, Capredor. I don't know how to pronounce it. But yeah, I, I haven't done this ever, but I discovered this through just browsing Kickstarter for miniature-related campaigns, which mm-hmm. that's never how it works for me. I always, like, someone always sends me a link from, like, off the site, like on Facebook or whatever, on Discord, and then I go and follow it. I've never actually just browsed Kickstarter for, like, an active campaign that I would like, and it's kind of weird that I did that. I don't know why I did that. No, I, I think that's a kind of a cool thing. I, I want to, I used to do that and I kind of want to get back into it. The only downside of that is you're going to end up backing a bunch more stuff. I like how you talk about like, it's like a hobby. It's like, yeah, I used to do that. I want to get back into it. You're like buying shit. Into, <laughs> yeah. I want to get back into browsing Kickstarter and find shit I don't need. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, but that's really cool. Okay. So you get, you got both though. Um, they're both very busty ladies too yes kind of kind of is a thing it's what your mom was kind of like implying um <laughs> is like why are you why are you just painting big booby ladies all the time scott yeah, she's like i'm disappointed in you son <laughs> yeah why can't they look like a real person <laughs> although this um the the art concept for the the fighter lady looks less real world proportions than the actual sculpt the sculpt looks a little bit they they both aren't like too far off so yeah not too bad just accentuating certain aspects oh yeah you're right the concept art is a little (laughs) ridiculous i didn't notice that before Um, all right no more big booby elf ladies what's your first one here all right so i'm mine's gonna start I'm going to go in reverse. I'm going to go to my oldest one first because my okay. la- the, the last one is the one I'm most excited about, and it's the cheapest. All right, so <laughs> mine would be the very first thing I backed. Back when I first kind of got into miniature painting was I decided I wanted to um, back something that had a whole bunch of minis that I could paint for Dungeons & Dragons. So this game, Massive Darkness by Cool Mini or Not, came out, and it is – very much a game around like classic fantasy tropes and monsters and all sorts of stuff. And I backed at the highest levels, you get all these extra expansions with more monsters. Um, It's Simon plastic, so it's not great. I think I've painted like three of the models, maybe out of like 150 I got. The the, the larger ones that are monsters are, um, seem to be nicer quality, seem like in that era of Simon plastic they worked better the bigger the model got. Probably there was a diminishing return once they got to a certain level, but they're like the size of your fist or or so, those ones looked really nice. Um, and I don't think I've painted any of the big, big monsters. <laughs> but um, it's a decent game. Um, it's not very difficult. It has a campaign system, which is kind of, slapped on not nearly as in-depth or interesting as it could be um and uh my daughter and i played this game a ton she really liked it and it kind of helped her with learning basic math and that kind of stuff so that was that was a lot of fun for that it is a dungeon crawl loot grab so if you like stuff like diablo games like that it feels like diablo the board game 
uh, which is great. I love collecting shinies and getting sweet ass big swords and destroying monsters. So I don't regret it other than the fact that I'm going to have these mo these freaking piles of plastic in my closet forever. So I think an important statistic that we should share whenever we share a Kickstarter we back that has models in it mm -hmm. is how many of those models are currently painted. So Okay. Uh, so I, I didn't paint the elves. I haven't got them yet. Uh, but Massive Darkness, how many models are painted? Well, you've painted two of the models from this <laughs> <laughs> for a video. I did, yes. And I, I believe I've painted three. So I painted one more than you have. <laughs> okay, nice. So five out of... 150, 80? 150-ish. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. I have them in like a big, all the minis are in like this big double-decker toolbox with compartments, which makes it easier for playing the game. But it's a big, huge box filled with minis. And the reason I've actually even painted the ones that I painted was for D&D uh, &D games when we needed a, either someone playing it as their character or a specific type of monster um, that we wanted to use for a boss or something. It was... It wasn't like I just sat down and I wanted to, to crank through them. I, I, right. that, I didn't do that when I first got it, and I think that meant it was never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that wasn't also the point of the box. Like, maybe if you're going to have an encounter with a certain thing, you'd paint that thing, but you're yeah. not going to paint them all just on the off chance that you may use them in the future. I get it. Yeah. All right. Uh, next on the list for me, I haven't received this miniature yet either. This is from Legacy of Inu, which is from a company that I really like called Nico Galaxy. Mm. Um, they also have a lot of female characters that just look really badass, mostly sci-fi concepts, kind of like punk sci-fi, um, kind of like cyberpunk. Um, this one, though, was a fantasy world that was created from the ground up. And you can actually kind of tell that they kind of leaned more heavily into the backstory and lore of the world. And uh, a friend of ours, Matt Sexwish uh, in Germany, like collaborated with them to work on the world and the backstory. So all of these characters that you see in this campaign, like come from certain parts of the world and have certain characteristics. Like world building is like a really complicated thing. It's like so much to think about and like balance correctly. So it's kind of cool to see just like a different fantasy world. Um, and there are things that people are familiar with, like maybe there are like elf type characters, but also there's like a lot of different things going on uh, in terms of the aesthetic that is really cool. Um, I think I got... Uh, I'm going to guess. Let me try to guess which one you got because I don't know. Okay. I guess that you got... Her name is Niobe, the High Oracle. You are correct. I yes. Did Niobe. It was between Niobe and Ernest, uh, the one that Ben Comets painted. Uh, uh, Ernest yes. is just like way evil, and she's just creepy looking. I love her. But the box art for Niobe, done by Aitami Alonso Torrent, I think is his name, mm -hmm. um, just it just blew me away. It blew me away like no other model has in a very long time. And I don't hope to paint the model like this, but it just inspired me to to want to pick it up so much. Yeah, they had some some heavy hitters in the box art painters for this they project. Did. Holy buckets. And I hadn't seen all of these. I'd seen most of them through Instagram. I had not seen the one, the uh, Arnold Lazaro one where she's holding the candelabra. I had not seen uh, that one before. Yama, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd seen the one Dave Colwell painted. One thing interesting that I found that I see in this is there's certainly multiple sculptors that are sculpting these, specifically the ones that are more of a, a traditional bust seem to be much different in style than yeah, the yeah. like waist up, waist up bust, which I think is kind of weird. Yeah, you know what? I feel like back in the day when busts used to exist. I don't think we really had them with like full arms and weapons going all the way down to the waist. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely a, a new thing nowadays to have like the full upper body of a character, which does make it quite challenging to paint because there's just so much of the model. But yeah, you're right. There's two distinct styles for sure. Yeah. I, um, I think that the reason it's gone that way, this is just me taking this off the top of my head, is it allows us to paint 
all the cool parts of the model without the boots. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, sure. Because when you just do a traditional bust like shoulders and up, like you're really restricted on what you can actually achieve in variety. It's basically kind of just like a character, you know, concept. Whereas when you can go all the way down to the waist or even like mid chest, like you can see much more of their outfit. You can see much more of a, an individual design and, and all that kind of cool stuff. And, and you don't have to paint the lower half of the model, which is the boring ass part anyway. So that's true. You that's know, true. I think it also just makes it look bigger and better, you know, it looks so much cooler when it has like this like huge portion of the model to paint versus yeah. just like the shoulders and the head. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, What's up next for you? All right. Next one for me was I was an OG in back the old original Everwest, Everlasting Wet Palette. Nice. When it first was launched before Redgrass Games was, was even a thing when they were just a baby company. This was their first product. Um, and, you know, I used them. This was, again, very early on in my painting journey. Uh, 2017, um, I think was when it, this was, yeah, when this went and be, I backed it because they advertised the, the reusable palette paper, which mm -hmm. they ended up not including on this original Kickstarter. They did in their most recent Kickstarter, they did formulate it, but I thought that was going to be such an amazing thing. Sick of having to cut my stupid pa parchment paper sheets for my Everlast, or for my uh, Masterson. Um, I used it when it first came out, and I put it on the shelf for like two years, and I was like, oh, Masterson's better. And then in the last like year, I've gone back to it. For the main reason that I was like, oh, I just got the paper already pre-cut to the right size, I was just, just for laziness. And I actually come back around to it as I think I've gotten more experience in miniature painting, that it works great. Like there's, you know, it's, is it, world's better than any other ones not necessarily but it does its job well and i i enjoy it so i'm glad that i got this one main value being that you don't have to cut the sheets anymore legit that's it yeah. i just don't yeah. have to cut the sheets <laughs> i mean you have one right yeah i have two i have the version two and the version one and what do you think of it you, you go, use you, it you want to you want to go there again uh oh uh oh uh -oh. you, you know my opinion on this thing. So, yeah. It's funny because they emailed me recently. They're like, do you have any feedback on our wet palette? And I was like, well, you didn't fix the air quotes problems that I discovered in the first one. And honestly, they don't need to because people like it despite my pedantry. Um, I have the big one, the blue one. And so I, I think a problem that I experienced might be related to the fact that it is big. Um but you can stop me when you remember what I normally oh. say. Oh, it dries out on the middle. It's, yeah, it's just I mean, it dries out everywhere. It's oh. so shallow and so big that it dries out. I gotta say, like three times as fast as my Masterson, which is deeper, has more of a well for water, and it's mm -hmm. smaller, so less surface area. So that's annoying. Um, I don't like how the paper seems to absorb the paint, and this is kind of my issue with all of these like uh miniature painting wet palettes that are kind of like that focus on the miniature painting like hobby is whenever you buy them so this is like the army painter one the everlasting one the paper seems to absorb the the the, the paint like a sponge uh in some circumstances um and that's kind of weird i don't really like that uh the magnets weren't glued in they fell out over time the wet palette has a rubber gasket which makes no fucking sense uh, for so many reasons. Uh, you don't want an airtight seal on your palette. You would just overhydrate your paint. You don't travel with paint in the wet palette. It would just slosh around everywhere. So it just, it just seems like they made the product, like a non-miniature painter made the product and was like, this sounds like a good idea. And it's like, it actually isn't a good idea. It's just dumb. Um, so that's my, that's my main beef with the product. Yeah. I I have the big one now too. And I've used that a little bit and haven't um, encountered what what you have with the drying, but Interesting. what I, what I do, and, and here's why I, I feel I haven't, um, I'll do it in one run and I don't like save the paper for use the next day. 
Like oh. I'll use up the whole thing, whether it's a small one or a big one, or I'm just going to use as much as I'm going to use. Um, I try to keep it wet throughout the number of hours that I'm painting with it. But the absorption of the paint, other than like inks and stuff, you keep those on there or, or uh, um, like contrast paints, that'll they'll soak through eventually, not right away, but um, but I have a like my Masterson palette. A sponge is a variety of colors too from absorbing things. So, um, yeah, I, I think if you are going to leave it overnight and that kind of stuff, with you, you don't want to keep it all the way closed because you turn it into a, a humidifier and it's just like it's a hot box <laughs> in there. And it's just like, I don't know, I don't really uh, think that's the case. If you put it slightly ajar, then it dries out entirely. So, it's kind of like you, I use it one day. It's not a multiple day things, and I haven't had problems. But I feel like that that's not necessarily something that I, you're looking for in a wet palette. Did you say that normal paper absorbs your paint as well? Mostly inks. Mostly oh. inks. not not paint, but inks. If I sit, if there's like a puddle of ink on there, and I leave it overnight for a day or two, uh, especially certain kinds of ones, it will stay in the. A thing underneath but um okay not as often as the palette paper you get in the the pre-cut ones for the different companies that do that sure but yeah we don't need to go too deep into yeah into this. but this it's wasn't like, very it wasn't very expensive i think um yeah i it was like 20 30 dollars and then i got 100 sheets of the paper in the thing and so you know Definitely not a regrettable purchase. Sure, yeah. It's not, like, bad uh, by any stretch of the imagination. No, 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 no. All right. Keeping in the theme of wet palettes, I oh, backed Jesus a different wet palette uh, called the Exemplar <laughs> Premier uh, Wet Palette System. This system. by Kit, who also does the hobby handle that everyone loves that... uh that's done by Game Envy, um, mm. and they have they have a collapsible cup, which is John loves those things. Um, they have a hobby handle, like a variety of them, a sable brush, uh, a synthetic brush, and like a brush like handle. I messaged him about a receipt or something for Kickstarter, and then he was like, "Hey, do you want a bunch of other things?" And I was like, "Sure," um, <laughs> and so he sent them my way. Um, but yeah, so I bought this primarily because personally I'm looking into making a wet palette at some point. I don't know when. I have, I'm not like working on it right now, but I wanted to see what the competition is doing. And this is one that I wasn't familiar with. And they have a couple of different features. Like um, they have the top that has clips on it. Again, not a super fan of like clipping the lid on. I don't think it's necessary. But they have like a a lid that folds open to reveal additional storage that you can lean your phone against. Um, it comes with a squeegee thing to flatten out your paper. And I've never seen a palette come with that. That was one of the ideas I had for a product because I always talk about flattening it with like a piece of wood or cardboard. Um, so that was cool to see in there. Um, uh, the bottom has inserts for copper to make it antibacterial and you can replace them if they ever get super grody. Um, so yeah, it has like a couple of innovations, but I kind of want to just see how it feels when when you paint with it. If it just functions like I want a wet palette to function. Oh, it's got the vent lid system too. Oh right, it has. Okay, yeah. Um, all all great ideas. It has yeah movable grommets so you can adjust the uh, water evaporation based on where you live. Very very cool. Yeah, this looks like they have like put in the work to think about specific things to improve yes. it. So yes. I dig that. I did I did not get one of these, but I saw yours. So, that, oh my God, there's the collapsible cup. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have two of these if you want one. Jesus Christ. I want... Jesus Christ. I want all the collapsible cups. <laughs> shoot them in a, with a shotgun outside. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. 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 Um yeah, actually I don't even know if I'm supposed to show this or not. But... It's always good when you start that way. <laughs> I just got this in the mail, which is another uh wet palette. 
different yeah. company. Uh, the name of the company is De Artisan Shop. Yeah. And uh, it's like a double decker. So, which is yeah, it has a hard pad in there as well, right? Yeah. So it's like both the top and the bottom are uh, wet pallets and they give you two sponges. I didn't put the sponge in the top one. So if you have like a friend or, you know, you run out of space, you can do that. But then the middle section on one side, it's the hard pallet with, this is where you put a bunch of brushes in and then the hard pallet. And the other side, I don't know what this is. There's like, <laughs> this, this is like, goes deeper. So it's shallow on this side and it goes deeper, 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 deeper. And nice. same thing over here. It does that on these edges. In the middle, it's flat and more raised. I don't know what this side is for, but I think it's a pool for really tiny people. <laughs> Just get the kiddie pool side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get under the deep end, no diving like signs. Yeah, yeah. You gotta like take a sharpie and like write in like the deep area, like eight feet, <laughs> or, like whatever it is. <laughs> it's a it's a miniature diorama. We can make a little, like a little Joshua Lai or Oliver Spath, little tiny, tiny diorama with just a teeny, yes. tiny person in the pool. Yes, dude. <laughs> All right. Go. So, yeah, I just got this. I don't know. Whoops. I'm sorry if I wasn't supposed to show it or talk about it yet. But so far, it looks pretty sweet. And it comes with its own paper as well. So. Nice. Anyway, I'm going to get in trouble. Uh, see, this is why it's better when, I, when we do this in person. Because then I don't have all this stuff sitting around me that I uh, <laughs> I get sidetracked by. I need to talk about. All right, that was your. So we've officially checked the uh, wet palette box. Yes. Now, because we're going in opposite order, and you're going to the new newest, most recent ones, and I'm going yeah. to the furthest back ones, uh, we're gonna have a little bit of overlap. Here's the my next one is one you also back. So maybe we both talk about it now. Yeah, yeah. You convinced me to back this one. I would like to say, <laughs> here comes the hedge, people. I'd like to say I'm sorry <laughs> because uh, I was wrong. Um, Were you I, though? I feel like I haven't given this really a run for its money. Yeah, I, I haven't tested enough of the full range to really give my full review on it, but I've used a fair amount of the colors. So what we're talking about is the Nocturna models and the paint acrylic colors and fantasy figures. Now, I didn't back any of the figures, but at the level that I backed, I got a bunch of free figures. Um, by and large, I'm not a big fan of Nocturna's sculpts for their uh, their miniatures. They've had one or two that I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool, but 95% of them, I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't know. What do you What do you think? I but, think it's it's clear that the models are high quality, and yes. I know someone out there likes them. But the yes. subjects they tend to tackle aren't ones that I'm super into. Uh, they did a campaign once that had a bunch of fantasy characters in it, it had like a goblin and uh, like a wizard. Um, and I wish I could. There should there should be a way to find out. Oh, here we go. They've created four campaigns. Yeah, the quest. It's called The Quest. Dragons, Dwarves, Elves, Fantasy Creatures. Um, they had a bunch of really cool designs that I was super into. And one that I was actually into was the Goblin. And that mm. Goblin came with these paints when I ordered them. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, it's clear they're awesome quality, but just not my cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah. They're not terrible by any means. They just don't entirely jump out at me. So the reason I backed it and the reason I talked Scott into backing it was their paints um, that they... I don't even remember exactly why they said they're awesome. They're they're matte, they're creamier, which I was really excited. Mostly I got kind of like sidetracked by the bottle they use because they use the same bottle type as P3 paints. So in my mm. brain, I connected that they were going to work like P3 paints, which I love P3 paints. Um, in actuality, the colors are a little bit all over the place. Like I used, oh, I've used a, quite a few of the greens um, most of the greens, um, especially in that project they were working on for your Kickstarter, and the mm -hmm. coverage was just terrible. I've never had greens not cover well, like because green has a fair bit naturally a fair bit of blue pigment in them, and blue is the various shades of blue are some of the heaviest covering paints pigments you can get. The op opaqueness is through the roof, and these greens I just struggled. They were just 
just so translucent and so spotty and didn't cover evenly and I struggled, so I was ticked. Now I've used some other colors, some of the stuff in like their skin tone range has worked great. Um, some of the blues I've used have worked great and I've used some of their darker crimsons and stuff and I really like those and the inks are really nice. The inks feel like the classic um, Games Workshop inks back when they made those. Um, they even have a color that's basically chestnut ink. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so you bought the whole range of this, right? I bought the whole range. Damn, and, son. Yeah, I kind of realized I have a I have a paint problem. Like, I, <laughs> I buy too many paints. Um, not because, like, oh, I buy paints that are bad. I just buy more paints than I'm ever going to use. Okay. And I already have, like, if this set were to die in a fire today, I would have probably all those colors covered through my other ranges. So I was like, what was the point? Um, there is a kind of a, a level of saturation in your paint um, collection. As long as you have the colors that serve you well and, and you're not feeling like you have any gaps or um, colors that are a color you like but don't perform the way you like, once you kind of can check those boxes, buying a full range is probably not a smart move. And uh, I'm not a smart person, apparently, <laughs> because I bought this and... I'd have been better off doing what you did and try like one or two of the color ranges and decide if I really like it. But it's yeah. still not available. Like this came out in February 2022. It will have been out for two years. So I will have owned it for two years and you still can't buy it as far as I know because people have asked and I've looked. I can't find it. Um, buy it retail. So. Yeah. Yeah, I bought just one set, the skin tone set, and I used like uh, a reddish brown color. I don't know on what, on like a Cursed City model. I think I actually used it on Gloria Van Elton or something, maybe the earliest one. And it just had just kind of terrible coverage. And I'm kind mm -hmm. of realizing the more and more I paint that the most important thing to me in the paint range is that it just doesn't get in my way. Like it yeah. doesn't slow me down unnecessarily. Like I will always use a color that's more opaque and uh, maybe it isn't the perfect color versus one that is the perfect color but it takes like seven base coats to get full opacity or, or whatever I'm trying to do. Just because it's such a pain in the ass to have to do that. It's so annoying. Yeah. Fighting fighting with your tools is like one of the biggest things I think for this hobby that we need to be mindful of if something yeah. is making your job harder or take longer you know, find a, find a different solution to that. And I find too, like if there's a skin tones are a great example. If there's a skin tone that I know it's tried and true and I know it's going to cover how I need it to cover, I'll mix in a little bit of purple or a little bit of orange or a little bit of whatever other color to transform it to something slightly different because I know the base will work for me. Um, and I think just grabbing, having to grab a specific color, off of your rack every time you need a new color um, is probably over time not the most ideal way to go about painting, especially as you're improving as a painter and you're kind of learning new things. Color mixing is an important part of that. And so we don't need as many paints. So I'm staring yeah. at that full rack right now, it's just staring back at me. <laughs> I totally agree about ha like, a, like a skin tone that's just the right mixture for what you like to do. Cause I, I was painting this one of these wood elves for the campaign and I started out on his head. I always like to start there cause you kind of like have all your energy ready to go for mm -hmm. the most important part of the model. And I, I had an idea about how I wanted to paint the face. And because of that experiment, I tried to use a different skin tone. I used, I think it's called it's GW's current flesh tone, which is called maybe like Caliban flesh or I don't know what it's called. Cadian um, flesh? Uh, yeah, it's yeah, Cadian flesh. Yeah. And to me, it's always been just a little bit too yellow. Yeah. Um, and I, but I wanted, I actually wanted a yellow flesh tone for what I was trying to do, which was mix green into the highlights. Um, but long story short, I stripped the whole head and repainted it using <laughs> Talaran flesh, which is the flesh from GW that's older and not available. But that I just love and has just a, has great properties to work with from the get go, and it just worked. It worked better, and so yeah, that kind of convenience I definitely understand. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why you see so many painters um, use colors like Sunny Skin Tone 
and, yeah. it's, and it's typically not um, scunny, sunny skin tone straight. Scunny it's sunny skin, skin tone. Scunny, scunny skin tone is <laughs> usually mixed as a highlight for such a variety of textures and things because it's it's vibrant, it's opaque, it covers really well. It's getting bright. It, it, no matter what you add it to, it's probably making it brighter without just blowing it out with white. Um, and it's just like, wow, you see why everyone uses that is because it does its job really well. And there's not really a lot of colors from a lot of paint ranges that, that I see that are like, that fit that bill. They're a bright color. They, they increase the brightness of, to creating highlights, but they keep an opacity and they don't blow it out with too much white. Like ice yellow is, is kind of a more subdued version of that with the pure yellow, but um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So end paints. Uh, and we're gonna add, we're gonna add a new aspect midstream here of do we have buyer's remorse <laughs> on yeah. these Kickstarter back? Hey, I like that. That's a good one. Yeah. So level of buyer remorse um, from <laughs> it's not a yes or a no. It's like a fucking gradient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so number number of soggy tendies. Okay. So <laughs> so <laughs> the soggy tendy scale from zero to five. Um, okay. I'm about a four soggy tendies on this, you know, four. four out of five soggy tendies. That's that's too many soggy tendies. That's not good. Okay. What about I don't you? Think I regret it. I don't regret it that much because I didn't. I, I think it's <laughs> I think the whole hog. <laughs> yeah. I'm at a, I'm at a three out of five. I'm happy that I got the model that I got, the one that I actually wanted, and I haven't really tried the paints yet, so I don't fully know if they are you know bad. But the one experience I had was kind of negative. So yeah, I'm at, I'm at a three out of five. You saw me when we were sitting there recording for the Kickstarter, you saw me swearing at that green yeah, for like yeah, three yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah. So and you, were, uh, you were kind of stuck with it, unfortunately. Well, yeah, it was, it was like a, one of the main colors or something of our all, all like his cloth or something. I was like, yeah, mother. It was your mother color. Wasn't it? Wasn't it the color you were mixing into everything else? Uh, Some green color or was it a purple color? I can't actually remember. Uh, bad, bad bruise is what I used for the skin tone that covered terribly as well. And that's a P3 color I hadn't used <laughs> oh, before. <laughs> <laughs> but no. uh, yeah, I had, I had two feel as bad moments. Why it's not a full five out of five, there's two reasons for me. Not full five soggy tendies, two reasons. One, there are some colors that are solid. There are some colors in this range and the inks. I really, really like the inks. The other reason why is it came with uh, a couple of models. One, I really like the orc just like you. Two, I got the little bust of an elf lady and I gifted that to Vince and he was so happy. He was so excited. He really wanted that model. He painted it up beautifully. Um, and oh, so, nice. like, I was just, I was happy that he was happy. And so, to me, it was like, you know, oh, it made it made some of the feels bad of buying this worth it. And, <laughs> and I also gifted Sam the Witcher model, uh, the Witcher bust, which I know he's, I mean, he was pretty pumped about that. And I'm excited to see what he does with it because it feels like something that Sam could do an awesome job with as well so hey sometimes you get free stuff when you kickstart stuff and you can find like people you think would be a good gift for so bam you don't have to be you have to be stuck with everything that you buy maybe that's a good kind of tip for all of us for as we over accumulate in our miniature hobby over time is there's something you don't think you're going to get around to or it doesn't excite you as much so you're probably not going to paint it think about if there's somebody else in your life that would get excited over it or would paint it and maybe you got a good uh little Christmas gift or birthday gift or a thank you for being you gift. You know what I'm saying? Or sell it. Or sell it, yeah, if you just want to be a dirty capitalist like Scott. <laughs> All right. I'll just skip that one for myself because obviously I don't need to talk about the same we, product. We want to go uh, We want to go back real quick and do our uh, soggy tendies for the ones we've gone through so far. Now, you haven't received your first two yet. So I don't think you can probably have soggy tendies on the Dark Elf Lady and the Inu Kingdoms. I actually haven't even received the exemplar wet palette. Which okay, they sent me stuff that I didn't get on the campaign. Um, well, actually, they sent me everything, so I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to end up getting another wet palette in addition to what Kit already sent me. But I haven't used it yet, so no, no tendies, no okay. soggy tendies for those ones. But okay. Uh, so actually, I haven't talked about anything that I've actually received yet. So why don't you do your stuff? Okay. Um, Everlasting Wet Palette, um, because it didn't come with the the paper that I was excited about at the time, 
Um, it gave me a little bit of sogginess in my tendies. Um, but by and large, when I've used it, I've enjoyed it. I think it's a solid product. So I'd give it like one and a half so soggy tendies. Um, yeah. And that I think goes if we to asked you two years ago. It'd be a very different sog oh, level. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> it didn't. Also, recently I got their um, their little mini handle. Yeah. And I was kind of like, oh, mini handle. But their mini handle combined with double sided tape with museum wax. Oh, okay, this this is this is the new hotness. This is yeah. the thing you've discovered. Yeah, the museum wax is is amazing. It doesn't stay tick, sticky, tacky. It doesn't get, uh, you know, like pain in the butt to get the blue tack off the bottom of your base mm -hmm. when you're done. Um, it works. It's great. It's great stuff. But with Question that, about museum wax for you. Yeah. Okay, finish what you were saying. Um, with that, with the the swiveling head. This is a great, this is a great painting handle. So I'm happy yeah. they made something else that I like too. So it kind of influences my soggy tendy meter. Okay. Museum the, uh, wax question. Go ahead. The 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 spinny head thing on that thing actually pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I like how a couple other brands have that. Some will use like bottle caps from like Coke or whatever that just screw onto the handle. Like so, it's like okay, it's nice. It works for something you already have. It's otherwise trash. Same idea with that. It's got a cap. You can replace it and put a different model on your handle, and it spins around. That's actually a cool idea. Yeah. But museum wax. So if you paint a model 20, 30 hours, what I notice I tend to lean on the model with, with these three-ish fingers, two-ish fingers. Over time, I kind of push the model off of poster tack, and it fails. And then I try to stick it back on, and it never really – gets back to its former glory. Uh -uh. And so I'm curious with museum wax over a long paint job, if you've experienced this, does it kind of bend slowly and then fail eventually, or does it stay stuck down pretty well like like tape does all the time? You're right. Um, well, I haven't used it on like a bigger model, like a bust, which are, to me, when I more often will be leaning on the model. Okay. Um, like when I did the bust for my mom, I actually painted that right on the plinth with the rod in it because I just yeah. didn't want to have to deal with that later. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and how to adhere a bust with a pin through it to a different handle and then whatever. Anyway, I haven't done it there, but I can tell you when I've used it. The, the thing that's interesting about this is you kind of take some of the wax out and you knead it a bit and you kind of make it moldable and usable. Like it activates it and it gets it kind of warm usable. It warm it up. You put it on your, your thing, and you can just leave it on here like I do on the painting handle. And then it kind of hardens up over time. So if you put it on there and you're working with it, now when it's first more pliable, it's more likely to do that. But once it kind of gets set on there, like this thing is supposed to hold dinosaur bones up at museums, man. <laughs> Come on. I, I assume it's going to work great. And I have not had any issues. Like it, it doesn't go anywhere. But nice. Um, when you pull it off, you can get a little bit of a little bit of the film on the bottom of the base. I don't really care about that, but you could tack it off. Or I've heard you can use isopropyl alcohol and a little bit on like a paper towel and just rub it off, and it just immediately removes it. But yeah, it. Um, I prefer it much more over blue stuff. And I've, I'm embarrassed the amounts of different brands of blue stuff and blue tack and poster tack I've bought over the years. I probably bought eight different brands trying to find the <laughs> ideal one. I freaking imported stuff from Europe because I thought that was the stuff that was working great over there. No, it's not. It's all garbage. <laughs> Dude, I think we should keep a close eye on like products that are miniature painting products that come with the poster tack and just see like over the course of a year if they change and they start using like a museum wax esque product that they just kind of rebrand, you know, they're just, yeah. they're just stealing your hard work here, John. I know, I know. Well, not I just, yet, not yet. I give, I give, keep, a, keep I, give away, I give away all the great ideas for free. Uh, massive darkness, uh, Simon. I would say I'm three out of five soggy tendies on that. Um, only reason it's not higher is because it got a lot of play out of it with my daughter. If it was just up to me playing with buddies and stuff, I wouldn't have played it very much at all, but she liked it, so I played it. But quality of minis, especially in that age, 2017 Simon plastic, not great. Um, game, subpar at best. So, three like soggy middle. tendies. Okay, what's your next one? Uh, next one is Echoes of Camelot. I got Spamalot! 
Spam a lot. I got three models. I only paid for two, but it came with a bonus one. I got, oh. I believe, Percival. You got, you got, you got bonus onion ring in there. I did. Yeah, it came <laughs> with a Happy Meal uh, toy. Uh, I got. I think his name is Percival. Um, he has a big dick swinging hammer and it's got like smoke coming out of it. It kind of reminds me of a Dark Angel character, actually, a little bit. Um, I got him in 75 millimeter scale. And I also got, um, I can't remember. Oh, Lancelot. No, not Lancelot. Whatever. There's a character. He's big. He's mean. It's Sir Kay. That's what his name is. Uh, and he came in 32 millimeter scale. That's the one I didn't buy. And then I also got uh -huh. Queen Guinevere. Um, and the queen I got, I painted that one. So I painted one out of three of the models in that Kickstarter campaign. I don't have any plinths left. Uh, I need to <laughs> buy some plinths or print them or something. Uh, oh. because that, that reminds me, models. that reminds me because this is when we talk about things we were going to talk about. It's live on the podcast is yes. I, I was going to ask you if you wanted to do another order from those yes. plinths. I think we've discussed this at least three times. Three times. <laughs> because I owe, I owe you money, so I figured I'd just place an order. We'll discuss this offline. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you owe me money? <laughs> yeah, I owe you money. When? Don't you worry about that. Fine, I don't owe you money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you guys heard it here. All the goody peepees <laughs> can attest. I don't owe Scott any money. <laughs> Uh, okay, Soggy Tendies, uh, I'm at a one out of five. I don't really regret this purchase. You know, I bought I bought two models. They're really cool looking. I love Arthurian lore. I painted half of them. The other one, the other one has a ton of armor on it. Yeah, And dude. so I'm a little scared about, I mean, I think any way you go, TMM or NMM, it's got to be fucking work. Um, Brutal. So I'm... I kind of liked Queen Guinevere because she was a bunch of different materials all over. And so that was fun. Uh, Percival is just a bunch of metal. So we'll see when I actually start painting that, um, how that goes. But the model itself is awesome. So, yeah, I'm at a one out of five soggy tennies. Yeah. I, um, Which is this good was, for people. So that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. You want as, you want as few soggy tendies as possible for yeah, sure. So, yeah, no buyer's remorse or very little buyer's remorse. Yeah. I um, – this when I talked about earlier that there was some I had some jealousy that I didn't back. This was what I had was speaking of. Um, I, you, I'm I'm kind of that bow, right? Oh sure. god, damn it! I forgot <laughs> about the bow. I forgot about the bow. Fucking bowstring on the outside of his forearm <laughs> makes me cringe. God damn it, big child! I'm I'm ruined. My lore immersion is gone now. <laughs> My immersion, dude. Take it back. Take it back. I take it all back. I'm not jealous. Five out of five tendies, bowstring. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even buy it. You have buyer's remorse. <laughs> I have buyer's remorse for everyone that bought that model. <laughs> five out of five soggy tendies for you. <laughs> no, these are freaking sick models, and I'm like, oh man. I think when I was looking through them. I was just struggling which one because I like for the most part I liked all of them other than. Morgana's Morgana was one of my favorites, but she has a freaking titty hanging out. It's like, come on. She does? She's got titties hanging out? Just one. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 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 Morgana. Okay. Yeah, she has that. She has the native, like, United Kingdom vibe. What's it called? Man, and Braveheart. No, I'm losing it right now. <laughs> There's a King Arthur movie that has Yon Grafa in it, and I can't remember who the fuck is King Arthur in it. But King Arthur's always like battling against like the natives on his island, and they have a name, and I always forget their name. Oh, are you talking about Excalibur, the movie? No, not Excalibur. This is like a 2006 like shitty King Arthur Knights at the Round Table movie. Okay. It doesn't matter. They wear like war paint. They got like druids. They're kind of weird, you know. They're natives. Oh, what oh, they fucking call, bro. Oh, 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 so it's the, they worship the, uh, shit. Oh, now I know exactly what you're talking about, and I can't think of it. But she has this vibe. She's, like, part of that tribe. A lot of feathers, a lot of, you know, bird details. She's got a bunch of, like, war paint done. Dang, Christoph Kobolchuk painted this one. Nice. Speaking of heavy hitters, it doesn't matter. We'll move on. 
or does it matter? I'm, I'm looking up right now because it's gonna piss me <laughs> off. Okay, I'm not gonna find it, but I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking. About. I looked up Gaian, like Gaia, uh, okay, religion, okay. but that's it's it's like that in the, in the not the pagans, but uh, I'm gonna figure this out. You do the next one. Wiccans. Wiccan is like a like it's a not what I'm modern thinking day of. witch uh, thing, I believe. Damn it! Oh man. Clive Owen was in this movie. Kira Knightley, Mads Mikkelsen. Fuck, let's uh, kick off King Arthur from 2004. Okay, I know Clive Owen p- plays Arthur, doesn't he? Yes, he does. This okay. movie, I mean, this is just like exactly the kind of movie that 16 year old Scott wanted to watch. Oh yeah. Oh, did you know that animism, animism, entails a belief that all living things have a soul? Huh. Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, we we learned something great here. And I ah, uh, now it's Wiccan stuck in my head, but it's not Wiccan. But oh shit. Okay, let's go back to in, this. In the synopsis of this movie, they're called Sarmatian, S A R M A T I A N, Sarmatian people. That does not ring a bell at all. So rip. No, it's not it. But it's based off of that. That with that, like when they did the Crusades and stuff, they were trying to like convert everybody all these people to christianity well i think the crusades and i thought king arthur i think those are different time periods yeah they are but i thought king arthur took place like historically like prior just prior to the crusades but i don't actually know how those two it's all made up it doesn't matter i don't know well (laughs) it's a real person i don't know okay my next one okay i have here's my first one that isn't uh Hasn't been fulfilled yet, which is oh which is oh. hilarious. Okay, <laughs> two or no, either one or two uh, Black Fridays ago, I went on to the backer kit for Kingdom Death Monster 1.5. Because every the last couple of years, I don't know if they did it this year or not, they reopened the backer kit. So there's like this weird back entrance into the movie theater where you can sneak in, you know, to watch mm-hmm. the movie. So I never backed Kingdom Death, but if when the backer kit opened, you could go on and sign up for all these things and pay an exorbitant amount of money for things that haven't been fulfilled yet. Even though this, uh, oh no, they they keep pushing back the date. I don't know what year that this Kingdom Death Monster 1.5 actually was live, but it was a number of years ago. And so I went through and I added the Gambler's Chest, which is this massive amount of more content and minis, and the, what was the other thing? I did the 1.6 upgrade kits and the expansions of Death, which are more expansions um, as well. So I haven't got this yet, but there's going to be a buttload of stuff. And hopefully, the according to Poots, the Gambler's Chest should start to be ready for shipping after Chinese New Year, which I can't remember that where that is, but I think it's pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I I have Kingdom Death Monster, the 1.0 version, and the game is rad as hell. The minis are great. I've painted all the starting survivors. I've painted the White Lion. Um, I think that's all I've painted. Oh no, I painted the Butcher. I've painted maybe one or two others, but models are amazing. For gaming okay. models, they're great. So. so you got the base game through other means than Kickstarter, right? Correct. Yes. Okay, and then you you want it, and then the one point five is like additional monsters, further encounters. It's like an expansion to the game. Well, okay, one point is what I have. One point five is an update to the game where they tweaked things, they replaced cards with different cards, so it worked on balance. They added the gold smoke knight as the true end boss of the game. So that was really the only, I think, additional model in 1.5. Okay. Um, there might have been t- uh, Old Joe and one other, which are just like not really needed PC models. Um, there's like an update of the game. Like they, they did a patch, basically, <laughs> and that's okay. 1.5. 1.6 is another tiny tweak with replacing some cards um, in the way some things work again for balancing. So I have both of those card updates. So mine plays like 1.6 now. 
Um, but yeah, I, I got the game. But otherwise, I would have backed that as well or just bought the 1.5 from their store. Um, since this hasn't come yet, I can just give my soggy tender, soggy tendy meter based on, <laughs> don't ever say the word tender. Um, this, <laughs> don't so ever say the word. <laughs> don't you ever. The, the I, I'm going to go off of what I've experienced in the game and, and all the stuff I'm going to get or they're telling me I'm going to get. Um, it's it's a one soggy tendies. And the only soggy tendies is because they've pushed this on for so long and I got people that have been waiting for this stuff for years and years probably have more soggy tendies. But I'm, I'm, I'm willing to wait. I got plenty of stuff to paint, games okay. to play. So Okay. Excellent. All right. My next item was Instant Colors from Scale 75, which was the first competitor to GW's Contrast Paint. And I bought it exclusively to compare to GW's Contrast Paint in a video. Um, Why, Scott? Why? Why do contrast videos do well or something? They do great. <laughs> they do fucking perfect. So, yeah. Um, if your contra that, if your contrast paint video had like forty thousand views, guaranteed you don't buy the set. <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah, I I'm not particularly interested in the style of painting that contrast paint like even you know uh, wants you to do. So it's like, why would I be interested in this? But yeah, the comparison is interesting. I've always compared products, but now that we have Army Painter doing a similar contrast paint inspired product. I can do all three of them in a nice little roundup kind of just to see how they differ. You know, maybe there's value in one where there isn't in another. Who knows? But mm -hmm. I bought it for exclusive that reason. I used it. Um, I've used them at various points as inks. Um, mm -hmm. When I was painting a vampire, I used it over metallic color to make his armor like a red metallic. I used it on my Dark Eldar when I was developing paint schemes to kind of just see how the various yellow products compare to the contrast paint yellow products. Um, it's pretty uh, underwhelming. I would say I'm at a four out of five uh, Asaki Tendies buyer remorse. I bought the whole goddamn range. I bought the whole <laughs> fucking thing. Um, and while so you haven't used everything. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's not that amazing. So you're underwhelmed because, in, and I've used a little bit of yours. My experience with it is they're they're very mild, right? They're not yeah. as as like potent as contrast paints. Yeah, it kind of feels like it lives in this middling world of being a wash or being something with more coverage, um, especially for the yellows that I use. I was like, this is absolutely a wash on some of those. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that is definitely one thing I experienced for sure. So you've got like sixty eight pre-thinned inks in bottles yeah, yeah, essentially yeah <laughs> largely useless no yeah uh i don't i don't know if they're i haven't used a lot of the stuff but when i do a comparison of those three ranges i definitely will be more like technical and specific yeah i i mean i think for adding depth of color into other things quickly um i think it's there's some interesting opportunities there but yeah as being billed as, I don't know if they ever said this, but this is what the community just approached this as, as a com straight up competitor to contrast. They don't seem to be an apples to apples comparison. They're not the, they're not the same product. Now, yeah. so, now some of the contrast paints are pretty um, wimpy, I guess. I don't mean to say that in a negative, but uh, you know, they're, they're more faint. Um, and these would be more like that. Things like the Plague Bearer, Flesh, and like the uh, some of the yellows, oranges there, but a lot of the GW stuff is more potent. Even like their skin tone ones, I think, are more potent than these. So, yeah, so I think there are more of these than there are of contrast paints, right? Uh, or is it the other way around. Oh, uh, let's see. What's the full range here? Forty-eight colors is the complete range of. Scale 75 instant colors. Let me just, I have most of these 4, 8, 10, 14, 18, 19, 20, 20. Looks like there's a roughly somewhere between 36 and 40 contrast okay, so paints. A similar amount then. Similar amount. They have slightly more, I guess, but pretty similar. And I think the uh, scale, not scale, uh, Army Painter ones have noticeably less. I was kind of surprised. They only had like 24 or 30 or something. Colors? Oh, like milliliters? No, no, the number of different colors. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. 
So, okay, so you're four out of five. That's a lot of soggy tendies. It's <laughs> a lot of soggy. You have a lot of this paint now, so you better make that video so it feels <laughs> worth it. So the IRS doesn't come after me for uh, claiming it says uh, tax deductible. <laughs> yeah. You know, all you got to do is show it at some point in B-roll, and it counts, Rosef. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, I've got two left. Oh, we're going to get, we're going to end pretty much right on here. Okay, my next one, sh I, sh I haven't received yet, but I it's supposed to be shipping from China any as we speak, and it is Massive Darkness 2, the recumbening, um, no, Hellscape. <laughs> the recumbening. <laughs> Remember a little while ago when I said that Massive Darkness had crappy minis and bad gameplay? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I bought the second one. <laughs> 3.8 milli. Damn. Yeah, yeah, baby. They, they, they're, they're crushing it with this. This is kind of Heaven and Hell inspired uh, version. A lot of demons, a lot of angels, um, all is good and all is evil all at once. It seems kind of cool. It seems like the, the actual gameplay and the, the powers and the abilities and the customization for the characters is much more in depth. Still going with that loot gathering system. They talked a lot about how the campaign system is really their, their focus in this one. So that excites me. Um, obviously, CMON quality plastic has gotten better. It's not great, but it should be better. The minis look pretty damn cool. Um, uh, main reason I backed this, I made the mistake of mentioning it to my daughter when the campaign was live. Oh, no. And so she's like, yes, we're going to get that, right? I'm like, Dude, I okay. bet your wife did not appreciate that at all. <laughs> uh, she doesn't mind this. She doesn't mind the first one at all because it, like, it keeps both of us occupied for like two hours at a time and she can do whatever she wants. So my wife likes uh, this game. She also liked that I just got or my daughter just got Mario Party for Christmas. So now she and oh, I play, nice. play Mario Party all the time and my wife can do whatever she wants. So. Okay, okay. So same kind of thing. So yeah, I don't have the game yet in terms of, of hype of of this. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep my Soggy Tendy level realistic. And I'm going to say it's probably going to be two Soggy Tendies because I know the minis aren't going to be as good as like... Kingdom Death or, you know, Games Workshop and that kind of stuff, but they're going to be better. And I figure the gameplay is going to be better, but it's a CMON game and those are so hit and miss. So I don't know for sure. I hope to be wrong, but uh, it's going to probably be a couple of soggy tenties on my plate today. Okay. Okay. I was, you could probably use Lou as a reason to buy all sorts of miniatures, you know, you kind of get her into a game and it's like, oh, Lou, look at the second version. This is out. I guess we have to buy it now. It's like, okay. Yeah, I was, I was, I was trying to justify it for Kingdom Death and stuff, but after, <laughs> I, I, after I played Kingdom Death with my buddies a couple of times, I'm like, nah, we can't play this game until you're <laughs> like 24. <laughs> Blue. Yeah, not, maybe not a good idea. Mm. So, all right. Uh, that's mine. What's your next one? My next one would be Nocturna. If we could skip that one. I bought the A case. Uh, which is a magnetic carrying case for miniatures. Um, there are three sizes, the Messenger, the Cane, and the Victory 2.0. And they're all just they are the same thing, but just bigger, bigger. and bigger. Yeah. Um, I bought the Cane, not the Cane, uh, the Victory 2.0 originally, um, and I used it when we traveled to Vince's house, and I precariously had one shelf upside down because of the two vampire lords they didn't fit very well because their <laughs> wings are so gigantic so i put one on top of the case and one on bottom and the top drawer was upside down so everyone was upside down and magnetized to that shelf and nothing terrible happened everything transported successfully nothing broke so that was nice that, um that's a that's a testament right there if we can do that yeah so this this product is kind of great. So obviously you can make something similar to this for mm -hmm. significantly cheaper, but there are some things that are very nice about this product. Um, one, the the what the fuck are they called? Oh my god, I'm losing it. The cases come with pockets that are velcroed on the side, and so you can put books in there or what I do for uh, playing. Uh, a song of ice and fire every week is I put like the rules in there 
it comes with a 12 inch cardboard ruler i put that in there i put my my cards in there um that's super nice it comes with a strap to carry on your shoulder like a typical bag or the cane which i have the cane now as well has backpack straps on it that's cool the other thing that i really love that they do is they have like a little container that has magnets in the bottom and a lid on it that you can put on one of these shelves that also sticks to the metal shelves but you can put game tokens in it so there are, are so many tokens for so many different kinds of games and it's like kind of awkward to transport them like with like your miniature storage uh, you kind of have to kind of find it somewhere to shove it and stuff like that but for this it kind of works with the system already and gives you little compartments to put tokens in and so those two kind of conveniences for me kind of make it worth it to not have to go with like a DIY route. Yeah, this thing looks primo. I'm I'm just yeah. on their I'm on their website right now because I'm like, ooh, I kind of want to get one of these. They're yeah, not, they are, they're not cheap. Holy, they're balls. not cheap. Yeah, I'll say that, and I'll say I'll say this also. They kind of don't go together very well. So they're made out of the the outside. I'm gonna assume is probably very thin gauge steel or aluminum, and then the shelves are obviously like steel, so they can be magnetic. Um, but it's a box. You make a box, and then you put it inside of a cloth like outer shell mm -hmm. um, that's like padded. And the box, I've I've bought two of these now, and I've struggled both times to put it together. It doesn't seem like they go together very nicely. You kind of have to like. You almost need like a hammer or a mallet to kind of bash it into shape. And that kind of sucks given how expensive it is. That's, that's my only negative thing. I, I got them all to work, but it just kind of took some work. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like the Victory Case 2.0 is $200. Yeah. Uh, and up to the biggest one is $350. And then yeah. for more trays, if you wanted more trays, they're 50 bucks for three trays. So, mm -hmm. But they're all free shipping. They got going on their website right now. Free shipping. Oh, that's nice. Oh, apparently so, I bought the Messenger. I lied. I have the smallest one and the biggest one, but not the middle one. Whatever. Okay. Well, it looks like the cane is the biggest one. Uh, yeah, I have. They sent me that one because they wanted to do a sponsored video at some point. So I got the cane and the Messenger. Oh, nice. All right. Okay. I think that's a cool. That's a cool product. I think. Um, yeah, it's pretty neat. I have my smaller hard shell ones that kind of has a similar thing, but it seems more for fewer models and display stuff and less for armies. I know they make a bigger one, the one that I have, but I was more for just taking stuff for uh, for competition stuff. But yeah, yeah, this is nice. Another nice thing about this is you can have like your army packed away for ready to go and it's not gonna get dust and it's gonna be just, you know, all set up for you which is kind of nice to have it out of the way and not have to have a place to put an army. Yes. So yes. that's, and that's, the shelves are obviously adjustable. So if you have different height models, you can put them on a shelf and then, you know, typical stuff like that you find in magnetic storage solutions. Yeah, man, I got 120 zombies. I got to put on something, man. <laughs> a case, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, how many how many soggy tendies you got for that one, Scott? One out of five. I use it. It works. I like the convenience features. Um, yeah, n not not many regrets. A little disappointed in like a couple of the things it comes with uh, that I didn't really fully explain, and also how it goes together. But otherwise, it works as intended for what I wanted. Love it. Love it. All right, my last one is the one uh, I'm most excited about. <laughs> and that is called the Wow Stick. <laughs> what the wow stick. name. And I have the Wow Stick right in here in front of me today. Okay, okay. The, the Wow Stick is an all metal one piece mini electric drill, about the size of a pen. And uh, it has a USB charger port. You just plug it into the USB-C or something. And uh, you just put in your little drill bits. It's got a bunch of different sizes. Uh, like eight different size drill bits and you put them in here and then you just push the button you hear that and it just it, it just drills nice. um, it was cheap it was like 30 bucks shipped um, and uh, it, it great I don't ever have to do a, a hand drill again I can, I can it goes just the right speed it feels like four hour uses it's not just like going like a maniac but it's not so slow that it can't go through stuff um, I recently 
um, pinned the feet of this uh, metal confrontation model to a base. Mm -hmm. And I used this drill to pin through the pewter and it mm -hmm. didn't have any problem with that. So if it can do that, I think it can do anything for our hobby needs. The only thing I don't like about this thing is it comes with the cap. Okay, I'm, I put the cap on. And the cap just falls off. Like the cap isn't on there secure. There's no tight, snug fit. And so the cap is kind of worthless. Um, if you have the cap on, you can have one of the bits in though, so the bit is not out and exposed. But okay, it, it, it feels like there's a little bit of shoddy construction, but overall the construction of the pen seems decent. So okay. do you have any questions about <laughs> the wow stick? Any questions from the audience? Um, the battery life is fine. It hasn't run out while you're doing something. I, I don't imagine it does. No, I mean, I haven't had any issues with that. I mean, typically I'll use it a half dozen times and I'll just plug it into my computer for a while. So it's okay. it's never really had an issue with uh, with that. But I more have a question about the the confrontation miniature. I kind of I kind of get the sense that every once in a while you're kind of just working on like a random side project. Is that a side project or is that something for a video? Um, kind of both. This is actually for a new D&D &D campaign we're starting up. This is going to be my character. Uh, and I was just trying to find a mini for my character and I was just digging through the minis I had, doing some searching for STL files online. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really love this confrontation mini. I, I bought it back in like 2004 or something when I first got them. And and he fits for this, so I decided I wanted to do that. And then I was trying to think of like, you know, is there a good video to do for this? Actually, what my plan was prior to us having to do this virtually was my plan was to paint this on stream today with you. Okay. So I was just gonna, I had him all ready to go. I was gonna prime him up and then I'd paint him on stream and I'd do another kind of like, he's a knight in full plate mail with a shield and a helmet. So I was just gonna do another kind of quick and dirty how I do NMM for oh, okay. it's like a you know quick version of nmm what are the things for nmm that make it look good without spending a lot of time doing it it's more about light okay. placement and understanding the how contrast works with metals but i might just do that for a video instead i think i think doing a nmm for dummies kind of thing because i it's no disrespect i'm the dummy in this situation like how how we can make it look like nmm without futzing for a year to make it work so okay lots of hot tips in that video hot tips i don't know if that's the video the model i'm going to use um okay. for that because i kind of just want to get this painted for our D, D game but yeah okay do you want to paint sir percival no full plate mail full 75 millimeter no please i don't want to paint it i'm scared i mean that's the other thing people you know, realize when you're doing a video like what you're painting signs you up for x number of hours <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the bigger the thing the more hours yeah the longer it takes yeah, yeah. <laughs> um all right uh one of my last ones here i have two left uh i have the game hate uh, another simon game it kind of occurs to me that i have played quite a few uh simon games and i imagine you have too yeah um, but anyways hate um kind of interesting because a lot of these models were sculpted by patrick mason hand sculpted so it wasn't a 3d sculpt and i don't know i think before hate other games they did were 3d sculpted so this is kind of an interesting departure from their typical process not all of them were hand sculpted just some of them were um but this game is pretty good uh like your experience with massive darkness the bigger the model the better the result um, so the large prince figures are fucking amazing. Um, there is a bit of like samey same, uh, in terms of the aesthetic of each tribe. There are like maybe like seven or eight tribes and maybe like five or six of them are like super similar. Um, whereas there are like two unique ones or three unique ones. Um, the gameplay itself is pretty good. Um, it's not super in depth, but it's like good enough to like want to run a chronicle which is like a campaign in the game and i've done one chronicle and a couple of like uh just like kind of one-off games um in terms of what models i've painted uh you've painted one um in a episode of drug mini painting i painted the other one and then i have 
three models from my tribe, which is called Bulgar, that have been painted. And I have, I think, five left in that tribe. Damn. Okay, so you're painting the stuff Damn. you're using. So that's nice. Yeah, but there's like 70 other models that are unpainted. <laughs> Oopsies. It's funny uh, you say this. I'm just looking at these models right now, and I realize I have some of them sitting in front of me. What the fuck? Oh, shit, yeah. Dude, that guy. This uh, dude. Not that one, but the other one. I fucking love that guy and his crown and his giant like bone sword. Yeah, I got four of these guys randomly given to me by uh, Ben Waxman. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, so um, I really like this guy, the tribe of the Umbrock tyrant. Oh. This dude yeah. is my favorite, the double cleavers. Yeah, yeah. He's got a little bit of a, a mask from Mad Max going on. They These do have a, a really unique aesthetic to them. They don't feel like like generic Simon minis from board game XYZ. I think that's what's really cool about them. Yeah, that is true. I think it's probably because it's based on a world that was previously created by like a different concept artist. Uh, yeah. There's like a giant comic book for it. I have it. I can't remember the artist who does it. Um, but yeah, it was all in collaboration with that person. And they are, they are pretty cool. Very nice. Okay, so you you talked about how many you painted. Let's talk about how many soggy tendies on this purchase. I'm, I feel like I'm in between a two and a three because the gameplay isn't super amazing, and a lot of the models are fairly similar. Um, but there are some that are really cool, and the game works for people who aren't like super into miniature war games. I feel like it's a it's like a gateway drug a little bit. It kind of okay. gets you into the style of gameplay that you might experience in like 40K or A Song of Ice and Fire and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm at, oh, we'll give it two soggy tendies. Two five. soggy tendies. Okay, that's respectable. We're, I mean, Respect. we're pretty we're pretty harsh on our critique of the things we've bought and things in general, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. So, <laughs> so two is a respectable number. I'd go with yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would still play the game. If someone wanted to come over and like play hate, I would absolutely play it. Okay, yeah, uh, I am now done. So you have your last one. So this is the first Kickstarter little baby Scott ever backed. <laughs> Got his first credit card. Oh my god, yeah, this model. I fucking love this model. I know. Another hand sculpted model from Newark, Delaware. Jody Siegel made a... Uh, Something called the Undead Resident Collection Volume 1. So I assume there were supposed to be further uh, volumes. I don't know if there were ever. But the company that this person started was called Imbrian Arts. And they had this Death Knight character. And I've I've talked about it, at least I know, on my own YouTube channel. But I love this Death Knight character so much. And I bought it because I was looking for non-GW figures that were... Shorter than 40 millimeters, which was the height restriction for Kumani or not single figure fantasy category. And so I was like, this is beautiful. I love this model. It's unique. I don't think people are going to have seen it before. And it works in that category, which I felt like at that time was my like my wheelhouse. I felt like I was best at painting that scale of figure. Um, sadly, never painted it, but I still have it. And it's still fucking badass. Oh, man. This is Awesome. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go and check their stuff. I I, I agree that that's amazing, and the other stuff that are on this same collection, um, mm -hmm. is pretty rad. Uh, yeah. Two created, three backed. Embryonarts.com is still a website. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, let's see if it actually opens up to a real website. Maybe it doesn't. Oh no, no no. It comes to some weird Chinese website that looks like. Oh a, no. <laughs> it looks like like buying stuff for your restaurant, like. Oh, oh god oh god no it's, it's like a restaurant surplus store yes it is it's all in japanese okay go back go back <laughs> uh, uh in terms of regret i have i have no regret buying this it was a single figure it was 23 dollars plus shipping um the box itself comes with just a bunch of cool shit um, it comes with like a certificate of authenticity, it comes with an art print, comes with like an Embryon arts print. That's like, it actually comes with a, like more than you would expect. And then obviously the figure itself, um, super cool, uh, unboxing experience, beautiful model, not very expensive. So yeah, no, no regrets. I dig it, man. I dig it. I think that's a great, 
zero out to five attendees way to end our history within Kickstarter. Do you have anything on the horizon or any kind of thing you're keeping your eyes on in Kickstarter moving forward? Is there something that you're like, yeah, this is the kind of thing I might be, I might be up for, or the kind of thing I'm more likely to back or less likely to back based on where you're at in your hobby journey or based on your experience with Kickstarter? Yeah, I feel like something that I wish Kickstarter campaigns that sold miniatures, something I wish they did that no one seems to do. Um, maybe not no one, but if you sell a resin fucking figure, I want to see a picture of the resin model. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to see an STL of the model. So typically whenever I'm shopping on Kickstarter, camp Kickstarter campaigns, I'm looking for like actual proof that the resin cast of the model is going to be like awesome as awesome as the STL looks. So, um, that's kind of one thing. It's like a learning lesson that I've had because I, I backed, uh, one thing that's not on this list is the village. Cause I backed that on a uh, backer. It wasn't Kickstarter. Um, and I was super excited for so many of those concepts and man, they were, they were disappointing in terms of the quality. Um, and that kind of really bit me. Um, so that was one lesson I learned. Okay. I dig that. Yeah. That seems weird that you don't see that you, you get the, it's just like seeing, um, like STL files for people's 3d prints. Um, they're like, okay, yeah, you're, that looks good. But what does the actual print look like printed out? Same thing here. What's the actual resin cast look like? It seems yeah, like yeah. you get, you get the concept art and like this, the Z brush pictures, and then you can get like the box art painted by somebody, um, which is also good, but it also doesn't help me entirely. Like I want to see the bear resin and see like, this is what I can expect to get in the mail. Right. Yeah. Um, for me, I think I'm less likely to back games. Um, I just, as I'm waiting for another game to come in the mail, um, I, I, <laughs> One, I'm just to a point where I don't have a ton of time to play games. Um, and the games that I have, I still want to play. Or the games my buddies have, we still want to play. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a thing that will catch my eye. And will it'll really have to blow my socks off in terms of having amazing models and be a really enticing game system. But I think I'm just going to be a lot more gun-shy with that. When it comes to painting-related stuff, uh, I'm not going to go whole hog, I don't think. But you can hold me to that. Um on, on actual like paint lines and stuff. It has to be like a real connection where I can, I could feel convinced as to why this thing will deserve me backing the whole thing. It has to be a, a sound enough reason. Okay. But the things that I think I'm most likely, and I'm actually more excited to do are those one-offs, just like your, um, the undead resin collection. Um, like the, a single mini or a couple minis that really excite me that are high quality resin casts that I really dig the sculpts. Um, yeah. And a lot of those companies now, um, they're not using Kickstarter as often. You know, they're just released through the company's page, especially established companies. Really? But yeah. When you look at like, I mean, Big Child Creatives and uh, Dale God are examples of going through Kickstarter recently. But if you go through like, oh, if you go through Black Crow or you go through all these other, you know, Nocturna and stuff like that, like all these companies, they release them on their own site and they put a little hype around them that they're releasing new models. Really? But, I figured everyone would want to use Kickstarter if they were able to. Yeah. Maybe when, maybe the difference is, is if they're going to do a full collection as opposed to one or two models at a time. Okay. Um, but yeah, because there's, you think about the number of busts and larger scale stuff that comes out. A lot of those aren't through Kickstarter, but maybe maybe I'm, maybe my brain is off. Maybe more of them are going through Kickstarter than I envisioned. But a lot of stuff I look at. Also, I'm so used to going getting all this Bureau Mir Mirabalis stuff. That's oh, not, that's not, true. Not through Kickstarter. It's just pre-order, which is kind of like his version of Kickstarter without all the bullshit attached. Dude, can you imagine if he like released like ten of his concepts like one more time on that Kickstarter campaign? Yeah, just take his like five or ten at a Kickstarter of re-releasing them. Also, how much people would be pissed about that? <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah, that might not be great, uh, but it would fucking slay. Yeah. Um, it would. Okay. I. I mean, I. I kind of feel what you're saying too. Um, 
there is so much bullshit with Kickstarter that I don't know. Like, even if I made like a million bucks, which is like very wishful thinking with this campaign, um, I feel like the amount of work like wouldn't be worth it. Um, Cause it's like, I'm like, we're kind of getting to crunch time before mine is supposed to be done. And like, there's, you know, there's a couple of things left, but I'm kind of like working on it like all the time now. It's not just on Monday. It's like every day of the week. And it's just like, this is a lot of work. And I think if maybe you figured it out one time, maybe it'd be easier the second time. But even then, there's like a lot of stress just surrounding even launching a campaign. that I'm not sure if it's worth the money that it earns, but we'll see. We'll figure out once it's all said and done. Yeah, that's good. You you get to go through the whole motions, and, and then I get to learn from that. So <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Squiddy did right. it. Squiddy did it. Duncan did it. Come on. Yeah. Can't be that yeah. hard. <laughs> Can't be that. <laughs> Famous last words. You rip. rip. All right. Out of the news. What do we got here? Depth don't we do the registration? Oh, I was just saying, don't we do the after party before the God news? But damn it, John, no. Uh, now my brain is so off. Well, are uh, you honestly asking that? You know, I'm not asking that at all. I'm not, definitely not no, asking it's, that. It's in the order, bro. Oh, in okay. the document. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're editing the news section right now. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, Dude, I have a big. Now. I got a big cup of Death Wish coffee and a big Mountain Dew. My brain. It's, Should that help you? <laughs> no, I can't. I can't see straight. I can't even see this document <laughs> on my screen right now. All right, a deputy registration is open. Uh, you and Josh, um, Jake. and Jake, had a little Discord chat figuring out what classes you were going to take. Did you decide on anything? Uh, yeah, so we all got together because you know Jake's the adult of the group, and he's like, "Hey, let's all jump on Discord as, as registration goes live." And I'm like, "Oh crap! I guess registration's going live." Sure. So we all jumped in and uh, signed up. Um, I went for the fancier badge, the whatever. It was the more expensive badge because I was like, I haven't been to Adepticon for so many years. I'm going to get the big badge. But um, they don't know if they're going to do the VIG bags this year. They said that they're not sure. Uh, Adepticon isn't sure based on like distri distribution and, and companies attending and all this kind of stuff. But is, if I signed up for the the higher level badge, I had to like fill out a question. Would I be interested in a VIG bag if they offered one? Anyway, so I, I just signed up for that real quick. And then I looked back at the classes because I'm like, I just got to see what's out there. Yeah. And uh, they were filled up immediately. Like <laughs> not all of them, but I signed up right at seven o'clock. Took me to like 7.03 to get fully registered. And I went back and looked at classes. Vince, all of Vince's classes were all were all full. All of Sam Lenz's classes were all full. I looked through people like Ben Comets and Banshee and um, Matt DiPietro. And I looked through a whole bunch of them. And most classes were filled like within five to 10 minutes. And I think from the sounds of it, from seeing on social media and stuff from other painters, that almost everybody's classes were filled within an hour. So nice. like way faster than ever. Um, I don't know if there's less number of classes this year, but there seemed like a buttload of classes. So, um, and a lot of big names are, are gonna be there. So I didn't sign up for anything. Um, I think the one class that I was interested in, um, but it was filled up. And if I would have been looking prior, I maybe would have signed up for right away was advanced skin tones with uh, Elizabeth Beckley. Okay. That one kind of excited me. Also, it's like four hours long, and I'm like, oh, I don't think I have the attention span for four hours. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I know exactly how that would go. Yes. The day would roll around for the fucking class, and you'd be like, man, I'm hungover. I can't see straight. And I have to take a four-hour class <laughs> at like at like 10 a.m. I'd be like, yeah, you, you would dread that. I just know it. I know it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. But Jakey signed up for some fancy classes. He got one with uh, Eric Swinson. Uh, he got one. He got a casting shadow, a cast shadows class with Eric Swinson. That's oh, pretty okay. sweet. And he did one or two other ones. Um, I think he signed up for a Vinci V class. And here's my plan. Oh, Vince is going to listen to this. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have a pl I have a plan, but I'm not going to okay. say it right now because Vince is going to hear this. So I have right, no right, plans, right. Vince. There's no plans that I have whatsoever. 
to sabotage your Adepticon painting class. You can rest <laughs> assured that that's not going to happen. Um, uh, Holy jo- shit, there are a lot of classes. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking at it? There's a yeah, buttload. I, I actually haven't registered yet for Adepticon. Um, you- just because I, like you, I knew I wasn't going to go for any of the classes this year around. Um, but, man, you just keep scrolling and they just keep fucking showing up. I know. There's just more and more. Mores and mores. Um, I think Josh he was taking a, wanted to take a Vinci V class too, so I think those guys okay. got a couple classes. But then our little we have a little Adepticon Discord group from a bunch of creators. I don't I think you're in that group. Yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Um, and people wanted uh, to me to run a and D session one night. Oh. So uh, I think we're gonna do a creator D and D session. A one shot, one evening. I'm all up for that. So I think we're gonna do that. Um, I think I'm gonna probably run kids on bikes. Um, if you're down, Scott, I think you, this would be the best role playing experience of your entire life because <laughs> I make you know Matt Mercer look like Dwight Schrute. So <laughs> no, it's it's, uh, I would, it's no, I'd love it. Yeah. Okay. This this is a blast, and this is this is, it's going to be so much fun. So we'll see if we can get four, five, six players. We'll do it one evening, take three or four hours, and we just hang out and have fun, and roll some dice and role play some as some 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 kids. Um, so yeah, that's that's a fun thing. So that's not a class, but that's an event I got set up. We're going to schedule what what evening we're going to do that, and that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, otherwise I just I just want to go and experience, soak it all in, just hang out. Just walk around, be obnoxious. Hang out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking like so I think Daryl said he's trying to raise money so he can afford a ticket. So I think he's <laughs> I think he might come. I don't know. He's not riding with us though, so I don't care. God no. God no. Um speaking of, Josh he's driving this time, right? Yep, yeah, it's he's it's his turn in the rotation. So we get to go in the old the the Ford what's the Ford SUV he's got anyway. Escape edge edge. He's got the edge. Okay, okay. He's he's the edge lord. Uh, <laughs> edge lord Joshi is gonna be driving. So yeah, we get to chill, listen to the listen to the Spotify tendy tunes the whole way. Oh, yes, yes. Get get pumped. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be set for that. That's all adept to contact. All right. Next newsy news thing. <laughs> I couldn't find Newsy News, so I did what any good red-blooded American would do, and I Googled miniature painting news. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? And I came what across is this? I came across a Smithsonian Institute article mm. from the Smithsonian uh, magazine. It just happened last month. And it is about miniature art. Miniature art from the early 18th. 18- hundreds so this is about a, a young lady by the name of Sarah Biffin and Sarah Biffin was born with no arms or legs and she became an accomplished miniature artist now on canvas but tiny little paintings yeah they're called miniatures they're miniatures small, so I guess when you bust portraits yeah when you google miniature painting this is what comes up yeah and so she painted with the paintbrush in her mouth. And there's a picture here in the link of the piece that sold at auction for twelve over $12,000. And she painted these, the study of bird feathers with her mouth. And the actual size of this canvas is four inches by five inches. So each of those bird feathers is about an inch long. And she painted this with her mouth. So we have no excuses not to get our minis painted, okay? What the fuck? If if Sarah Biffin can make 12 grand 200 years after she's dead by painting pictures of feathers with her mouth, you can paint your minis. So What? Seriously? Did she paint this uh the portrait as well? I don't know. Or is that is that of Sarah Biffin? Oh yeah, yeah, it is. It says Sarah Biffin. And in parentheses, or in italics, is who's the artist? By oh, Sarah she, Biffin. With her fucking mouth? You see a self-portrait. Dude, holy shit. Yeah, dude. This is newsworthy. I just thought it was awesome. Okay, so if you scroll down a little bit, there is uh, there's a little handbill. A 19th century handbill advertises a performance 
by Sarah Biffin. So she would paint with her mouth um, like as a performance. Like people could go and pay to watch her paint. Yeah. And Wait, it's, is her name Biffin or Beffin? Beffin. Well, what the heck did I say? Well, it's, 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 it's different in different places on this article. In the, in the handbill, it's Beffin. And then in all the written part, it's Biffin. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Oh, Smithsonian better check their editor. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, this is a sweet handbill with this old timey font that says miniature painter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Her mouth isn't like larger, <laughs> like bolded font. And it says she's. Even, see, she is only 37 inches high. So it's like there, it's this weird kind of like, um, you know, like a circus performing kind of feel yeah, to it. Yeah, like what it feels like, yeah. You know? Um, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, we should make these little miniature handbills and hand them out. <laughs> I don't know what we put on it. Like two, two men, each born with less than half a brain, talk about <laughs> miniatures. <laughs> And a really Together, yeah. make one brain. <laughs> a really big font that says less than half a brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even they understood clickbait back in the day. Oh yeah, was, baby. Right yeah, there. that marketing. What's gonna catch your eye? Boom. Yeah. Her mouth. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's the news that I came up with today, Scott. <laughs> yeah, you just added one though. Broken toads, silent. Oh yeah, I just thought of this right now because we were talking about the uh Spira Mirables, the Lucas Pena sculpts. It reminded me, there's been radio silence from Broken Toad on their big giveaway where all the money that they raised for charity and they were giving away uh, a raffle of these broken or these Lucas Pena sculpts. Yeah. Um, they said, I think it was like early December, they said, oh, draft raffle drawing is coming soon. And there's been nothing, nothing on anywhere on their social media, nothing on Facebook, nothing. I checked their Facebook, I checked their Instagram, I checked their website, nothing about it. And people are asking, like, did you ever do this? What's the deal with this? Whatever. Question mark, question mark, question mark. And there's nothing. So, like, if you if you did it, which I'm, sh I'm guessing they either did or something got up in the holidays, but it's been well over a month. Um, it's just nothing. If you go to nothing. their site, it's down. You can't so, even buy any of their product right now. That some of these uh, European stores, they like take off a month over the holidays, though. Like their whole website is down for a month. I've seen maybe they're one of those. But either way, there's just a lot of people asking about it. And even if you say, yes, winners have been drawn, you'll be contacted, yeah. exciting, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to draw up a picture or anything. Just put something out there. I, uh, I just want to get my, I have my hopes crushed and just know I can move on with my life. That I'm not going to get. <laughs> I'm not going to get the troll or the old lit, old witch holding the toad or anything like that. So, okay. The the website just changed. It's not Broken Toad store anymore. It's brokentoad.co.uk slash shop. So it's, it is up. Um, anyways, I didn't want to like add to any kind of hysteria okay. unnecessarily. Um, okay, cool. Um, they might have something going on because... Um, they were actually going to make some brushes for me for my Kickstarter campaign, but then were unable to, um, like, I don't know, maybe like two months ago or a month ago, they, they mentioned it to me. So maybe, uh, Chris, who's the guy who owns and operates this little store probably has some things he's, he's trying to get done or he's a little busy right now. I don't know. I know they were in the, uh, I think they're all past it now, but they were really busy because they were switching, uh, locations of the business, like to a yeah. much bigger place and they were setting up all the stuff for the the um the resin or the mold things and all that stuff and he told me this was like six months ago that that we'll chat about stuff after we're all kind of settled so okay all that right. could still be kind of happening all, all right right ah, 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 talking over each other man that, that's what fucking hate ah, doing ah, this virtually god damn it who does podcast virtually? Fuck them. Uh, Bruce, <laughs> go, wow, okay. I mean, they make it work. Okay, here's what I discovered about doing it virtually. I have to let you talk for a while. Yeah. And I can't I can't interrupt you with fun shenanigans. Yeah. And I feel like it's the same vice versa. Yeah. I, that's the real problem. Yeah. All right. I, I noticed two things. First of all is that. And we're not good enough at it because we don't do it often enough. Yeah, yeah. But it sucks a bit. 
of my fun out. Like it just kills my soul a little bit. Fun sucker, dude. You know, it is a it is the yeah, it turns my D sucker into a, a fun sucker. <laughs> um, but number two, and this is bigger, and I'm I don't know if you guys can feel this, you goody peepees can feel this in the energy. There is not the in-person magnetic <laughs> charisma and it's just just the, the energy, the crackling of the electrons of us being yeah. in the same room. It's yeah, not yeah. there. It's It doesn't exist. And y'all haven't been sitting in the room when we're actually recording, but it's like a tangible feeling. It's like there's a thunderstorm just about to start. Yeah, dude. It's the not magic here. magic mix has faded. Bro. Fucking <laughs> magic <laughs> mix. <laughs> not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Magic mix is faded. Now, we have fun here. I hope you all had fun here. It's been a fun day. But next time, we'll be back in person and uh, it'll be more fun. Yeah, likely more fun. Uh, if you like the podcast and you want to support it, there are a number of ways you can do it. Uh, some free ways are you can watch, uh, or not free ways. No, okay, okay. <laughs> we messed up. Uh, some not free ways. Some free ways. Fuck! Um, <laughs> That you can support the podcast or watching our podcast on YouTube with ads on. You can whitelist our channels with several add-ons on Chrome or Firefox, wherever your browser is. Um, you can also tell your nerd friends about our podcast. Um, some not free ways uh, to support the podcast is buying our merch. John's wearing a goodie PP shirt right now. And also, he has a mug. There's t-shirts, there's mugs, there's joggers. You can find them all on our Teespring linked below. You can also support us on Patreon. You get access to an extended episode uh, where we talk about things like uh, new models we've discovered from other painters that we like. Uh, we talk about things we've tried in the hobby, experimented with, failed, succeeded. And we also give feedback to one of our goody peepees each episode. So as a patron, you can submit models for feedback, but you can also submit topics for us to discuss on a given uh, episode. And if it's a good topic, we'll uh, we'll do it. John, what the fuck are you doing? I'm trying to look at the camera and off to the right is just some fucking guy fucking bobbing constantly. Dude, this is the John has had to pee for the last hour dance. <laughs> Woo! I look like a bobblehead because I got to pee so bad. Are my eyeballs yellow? Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, Scott. Wow, wow. Thank you, Scott, for all your shilling. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you goody peepees. You're hanging out with us on the Facebook group. You're hanging out with us in the Patreon, sending us crazy ideas or whatever, and talking about thingies that you want to have on the podcast. We appreciate y'all leaving comments in the YouTube vidjas. And, uh, yeah, between now and next time, make sure you paint some minis. And this is the time in the podcast where I say we'll catch you on the flippity flop.